And we begin at 10 with breaking news. A Grammy Award nominee has just posted bail on criminal threat charges. Chris Brown is accused of assault and battery. Big news on Oscar Pistorius, the Olympic star charged in the murder of his girlfriend. Adam Lanza shot his way into Sandy Hook Elementary School. Two men firing weapons and tossing explosives from the car at pursuing police. Ariel Castro, the monster who allegedly kidnapped and raped three women for a decade, has been talking to interrogators. Plaskin is being held in a psychiatric ward for assessment after Friday's stabbing at Jonathan Law High School in Milford when he allegedly brutally stabbed school friend Marin Sanchez to death after she refused to go to the prom with him. Men commit over 90% of violent crime of all kinds and, and as well as in, in, in school shootings and rampage killings, men comprise 98 to 99% of those uh, killers. And yet in the mainstream conversation about school shootings and rampage killings, which seem to happen with alarming frequency in this country, um, there's very little discussion about gender. Why is 98 or 99 percent of the shootings done by men and young men and boys? Because obviously the answer is not it's not about mental illness and for guns. It's about a combination of cultural narratives about manhood and ideologies of what, about manhood within our culture, and I often refer to Dr. Jackson Katz out of UCLA uh, for this, and he really talks about masculinity as being a very small box in our culture. So if you don't fall in that box, uh, if you show any type of emotion or vulnerability, you know, in the worst case scenario, you're considered gay, you're considered a pussy, you're considered effeminate, you're considered anything non-masculine is a threat to, to their masculinity, uh, which is a very dangerous, dangerous thing and very narrow and limiting. My name is Clifton Trotter. I'm, I'm 31 years old. A lot of what I do in many ways is, is try to really focus on the young male population in a sense because statistically they're the perpetrators. And so I definitely do a lot of work within um, schools and different community organizations and really the purpose of what we're trying to do is really just try to, I guess really in many ways, uproot some of these ideas that lead to gender-based violence. I want them to understand that it's about breaking away from these stereotypes, you know what I mean? They work with, they understand these different stereotypes because they understand that they have to live up to them. When you ask men in general what is masculinity to them, um, you get much more nuanced answers. I think a lot of men will talk about, they're aware of those sort of cultural constraints around them. They're aware of the, of the, of the, uh, the pressure on men to be tough and violent and competitive and, and successful publicly and all of that. My name is Yesenia. I'm 19 years old. My dad's experiences growing up in Bronx, New York um, really impacted him as a person. Learning what it meant to like be a man the biggest thing that he was like that mattered to him was like respect like this idea of like being respected and like people recognizing the power that you had you had to like define yourself as someone like not to be messed with someone um, that couldn't be taken advantage of uh, generally speaking I think it for a man it's safe to be angry it's safe to be strong or it's expected that they you know be strong somehow that they are still judged by their income um, and uh, their power in this world and however we define power you know status socioeconomic status job status you know, status in the community then coming to California he had to like redefine himself and like Reestablish that like reputation. So just not being able to work, like legally or illegally, um, he would just be at home all day. And my mom had to like get a job and like work outside the home. So that kind of like flip in general, I think, drove him a little bit crazy because he'd get like really anxious and like angry just being at home all day and like having to like cook dinner and like clean the house and like pick up my brothers and I from school. Um, I don't think he enjoyed doing that at all. We're living in a culture that um, is normalizing um, the violence against women and men. When we look at uh, the statistics, it's statistically men perpetrating violence against women, men perpetrating violence against other men. I definitely um, saw you know, gender-based violence related to gender norms in the household with my parents, you know, unfortunately. I saw that 
and then to under, understand like at an early age that's that's not right you know what I mean like that's verbally abusive but then it's it's kind of like how things escalate the abuse started when I was eight by that point it was too late for me to like fully understand that what was happening was wrong I remember my parents like arguing frequently and like my brothers and I would be like in a different bedroom just with each other while my parents were, like arguing in their bedroom um, but I could always hear like my dad like really like yelling at her like being really aggressive my mom just like crying not really saying anything um, I think that's when you when I learned like avoid conflict at all costs like don't don't complain don't make a big deal out of things I think that's like, I think it's one of the reasons why it took me so long to like tell people like what was going on with my dad. <laughs> because like you grow up being afraid, like you don't know what's going to happen if you tell somebody. What I'm beginning to understand is that too many times we point the finger at the individual. We always point the finger, oh that girl, that guy, da 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 but how did the larger culture play into that? Like there's so many factors that come into play when you start talking about, okay, what it means to be a man. Can I fully express myself? I can't cry. I'm supposed to posture and be this. It stifles like full human potential. You know what I mean? And, and, and it, it makes some of these callous, desensitized individuals to where you can't be empathetic. You, you can't relate. It's so detrimental, it's almost unspeakable. What? Sending emergency. Oh, my mom here. And get me to the bike. Oh, is she hitting her? <laughs> How's he hurting her? He made some red marks on mom. Where did he make the red marks on it? Oh my god! thinking what the hell would you tell your daughter your someday daughter when you'd have to hold her beautiful face to the beat up face of this place that hasn't learned the meaning of stop she's wondering how many women are walking around this world feeling the tingling of their amputated wings remembering what it was to fly to sing tonight she's not wondering what she would tell her daughter she knows what she would tell her daughter she'd ask her what gods do you believe in i'll build you a temple of mirrors so you can see them she was whole before that night believed in heaven before that night and she won't be the only one she knows she won't be the only one she's not asking what you're gonna tell your daughter she's asking what you're gonna teach your son so when people make declarative statements that, you know, men are the way they are, because just, that's just how they are, or boys will be boys, because that's just how boys are. This is ignorance. Boys, very young boys, are every bit as emotionally expressive as little girls are, but they have that driven out of them by the cultural environment, um, so they, uh, they learn very early not to express their more kind of tender, vulnerable emotions and they learn to convert those emotions into socially acceptable displays like anger. If you wear dresses, then people might bully you and make fun of you. When like kids are playing around like a boy and a girl and like the boy pushes her, it's okay because they're kids. <laughs> they're like older now and they're teasing and they like are pushing each other, it's okay because they're kids. Now they're teenagers, the boy pushes her, suddenly it's not okay. But he doesn't know that because no one ever told him it wasn't okay growing up. Usually by the age of three, uh, children have a very strong sense of what it means to be a boy and what it means to be a girl. Girl dress! Only you play with boys? How come you don't like to play with the girls? They have booties. <laughs> they have pecs. So gender norms in our society, I think they're first learned in the family. So our children are experiencing uh, gender norms from the beginning from their parents. I mean, they're being modeled. And schools tend to, to reinforce a lot of our gender norms. Um, and then we're bombarded with images, you know, whether it's um, clothing uh, for girls that are very specific to girls and tend to be very sexual in nature um, or the media and sort of giving us the notion of what does it mean to be a girl, what does it mean to be a boy, and how do we relate to one another. When you look at, at some of the dominant images in the mass media, uh, you see the, the strong heroic 
violent warrior as being uh, continuing to be a, a very important icon of masculinity. You see the, um, the elevation of um, male athletes, especially those who play the more violent sports like football, as being elevated as icons of masculinity. So I think culturally we still celebrate um, men who dominate, men who are able to use violence um, effectively to, uh, towards some end. We've got to think about the population that we're dealing with. You've got to think about what we're going up against. And I always say we're going up against popular culture. You're so bombarded with it that you just become programmed to think that way. It's oppressive definitely in nature as it relates to women, but also it's oppressive as it relates to men, just again in terms of our human potential and capacity and what we can be, and in terms of our relationship with women. Obviously gender is an incredibly important and central category to examine. It's not, by the way, anti-male to say this. It's not against men. It's just, it's just trying to be honest and introspective and self-aware as as individuals and as, on a societal level to look a more broad, take a more broad perspective and understand what's going on and then what can we do differently? How can we define manhood differently? We do not include uh, the male dominant power that, that holds power right now um, in seeing this as an issue that needs to change. Uh, we're not going to make the progress that we need to change violence uh, against women and men within um, our country. We have a long way to go, but our teenagers are so impressionable, and if given the chance, we can help them to change gender norms um, at a deeper level. Just seeing my brothers grow up, I don't want them to be someone that I'd be afraid of. And I think I would want my brothers to know that, like, whatever they feel is okay and whatever whoever they want to be they can be and like they can create their own kind of man and be that man and still be accepted remain critical never lose your curiosity never lose your ability to learn and never lose your ability to unlearn manhood doesn't always rest in being the aggressor how powerful is that in terms of being a man Boys don't cry. Faggot. Bitch. Gay. Oh, you a pussy. Dicks. Faggots. Gay. Bitch. Boys don't cry. Faggot. Weak. Pussy. Man up. Unlearn.